Hi guys. Uh, today I wanted to uh, give you an update on what I've been doing this week. And uh, first of all, I've got uh, a helper. This is uh, Ralphie, the uh, gnome engine, train engineer, and uh, he's going to be helping me uh, out here on the layout from now on. So you see him periodically. But anyway, um, what I was starting to do this week was to learn how to use uh, JMRI and its computer interface to uh, my system, the uh, NCE uh, 5 amp uh, pro system. So uh, a couple of things I had to learn along the way um, was first of all, how do I interface to the uh, NCE Power Pro command station booster? And uh, I had previously been just using a, the manual system and uh, I found that when I tried to do uh, engines with a, a different uh, manufacturer such as a BLI with a, uh, one of their older ones, the Precision Craft models that had a Digitrax in it and the BLI's got a Paragon 2 or 3 in it, they're a little difficult to uh, to do manually, just 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 too many CVs to change. So uh, I opted to go to the GMRI system. Uh, being a Macintosh guy, uh, I had to figure out how to do this. And uh, yeah, I've interfaced my Mac Pro in the house with the uh, PowerCab system using a little USB interface, but uh, I can't bring the Mac Pro out here. It's just too big and bulky. So uh, last Christmas, I bought myself a, uh, a PC laptop uh, for uh, interfacing to the system. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. In fact, I'm using it to make uh, part of this video. But anyway, um, what I had to do was, first of all, read the manual uh, for the NCE uh, ProCab system and also watch a bunch of YouTube videos. And I'm gonna post a couple of links along with this video on some of the uh, uh, most important uh, video links that uh, I found to be most helpful. One from Art Houston, which I used year, about a year ago, and then a more recent one with uh, Mike Deverell, but I'll, uh, I'll put those links on there. Now, first thing I had to do, and I'm gonna show you some training aids, so to speak, was there's a, this is the, the trip light key, key span USB, the serial interface right here. And you'll also notice that it's got another adapter attached to it. Uh, the problem is, is this is female. The one down on my NCE system, which is down below, um, is also female. So I had to get this additional adapter with males on both ends so that I could interface to it. So after getting all that done, um, I was able to uh, connect up to the, uh, to the uh, command, command station and start programming, which I'll, I'll show you some of the engines here a little, a little later. But uh, I wanted to go over some of this stuff that... Uh, uh, because it's new to me and I had to figure out how to do this. Uh, I was able to, using this JMRI system, successfully program and consist of BLI UP6A E6A uh, that has a Paragon 2 decoder with an older BLI Precision Craft model E6B that had a Digitrax decoder in it. I hadn't been able to do that manually. So uh, the JMRI interface made a big difference with that. I'm now working on three Cato F7s. Uh, one has the factory installed ESU lock sound in it, and the other two are non-sound NCE decoders. Um, I vary them most of the time. I buy Digitrax decoders because I find they're pretty standard to use. NCE's got a couple little quirks that I'm learning right now. For example, uh, Digitrax and BLI, if I want to do a factory reset, you use CV8 set to 8. Um, whereas with the NCE, you have to set 
CV30 to 2. So DCC may have some standards, but there's some nuances between manufacturers. Um, and there's some other things. I've got a couple engines. One's got a lens and one's got a TCS. And uh, there, there's some nuances with, with their programming too. I think the biggest one I have found so far is that uh, the ESU CV1 and 255 are set in concrete. You can't change them. So that's going to be a challenge to get the uh, uh, the decoders uh, and the three F7s uh, working together. I got a that's going to be an ABA consist and uh, it's challenging. I've tried it several times manually. A lot of bad words, but uh, uh, we're going to get there eventually. So, but anyway, um, that's kind of what I've been doing this week um, and. Uh, We'll show you some uh, some pictures of what I was able to do with the uh, JMRI interface uh, in another section of this video. Hi guys, I uh, wanted to give you a quickie update. Uh, you, as you can see in the picture here, I got a uh, brand new helper in my uh, train, train building. His name is Ralphie and he's a railroad engineer gnome. And uh, he just showed up today to give me a hand and uh, uh, since I'm doing the uh, JMRI uh, inventory and, de and decoder programming uh, with the computer so uh, I needed some help so he's out here helping me and I also have another helper there's Sadie down there she's my uh, other helper and she likes to come out here and uh, sit with me while I'm while I'm working with the trains so and just here's an example as I sit down pardon the shaking it's just a few of my engines there um, when learning how to do this and you'll notice that uh, the uh, mouse is an apple mouse so but uh, anyway, that's the uh, that's the, the Lenovo. So, and here's my uh, programming track uh, right here. I also set up one for HO in case I have a friend that comes over. No, nobody's an end scaler around here; they're all HO guys. But that's also hooked up to my uh, my system, my NCE system, which is uh, down here. And I got a power packs for connecting into uh, the program track to boost it so uh, it can talk to the sound decoders. So, uh, but what I'm going to be doing um, is working on uh, these three here. Uh, I'm not going to show that on here because you don't want to hear all the bad words. But uh, that that's, uh, these are all Kados. This is the one with the ESU in it, and these two are just standard with uh, Digitrax decoders. And uh, I'm going to set this one as the standard for these three, and then get, match these two to this one as close as I can, because this has got the sound in it. So um, here's another pair that I got to do. I got these. This is a uh, I know the hated uh, Microtrains FTs. Is, from what I've been reading about from some people. Um, the uh, shell is back in the house, but uh, these do, do run, they're programmed. Um, I got to uh, strip the, uh, the uh, shells and repaint them for uh, Santa Fe or something I'm gonna, that'll be running on my railroad. It's fairly easy. Years ago, I did, uh, this is a, uh, was an unpainted, uh, lifelike and I did the uh, the war bonnet on it which was grueling and I don't want to do that again but anyway that's kind of what I've been doing and uh, I thank you ever so, thank you for watching I appreciate everybody who's been my subscriber and uh, as soon as we get to 1050 which as of this morning is uh, one more subscriber I plan on having uh, a contest of some sorts and I'll let you all know about that when I get to it. Well, thank you very much.
everybody.